this is called unified border element. So let's go ahead and see what cube does. So a uh, cube, also called session border controller, it has an ability to connect one wipe dial pair with another wipe dial pair. So when we have to connect different dial pairs together, for example, an incoming dial pair with an outgoing dial pair, that can be done using cube. This is basically, this can be done within the CUCM or CME, but this is used for basically large networks, large environment when you have a huge amount of dial pairs and dial plan configuration. So this is used there. The device that is used for session control. Ability to connect one wipe dial pair with another. The different protocols it supports for internet working for peer to peer protocol communication are these SP232 SIP, SP232 SP23, SIP to SP23, and SIP to SIP. These are the protocols that are supported. And we are talking about wipe to wipe dial pair communication. So these are some features of uh, Cube. This for unified border element. It has address hiding. It can hide addresses, which are used for, for example, for natting or for security purpose. If we do not want to show our original numbers or URIs, we can use any mapping or like hiding the numbers under any other number or standard number known to the customer and not revealing the actual number. So address hiding is one of the features that Cube has. S323 SIP internet working, so intercommunication between S323 and SIP, S323 to S323, SIP to SIP, that is supported. DTMF internet working, transcoding, SIP security, billing and CDR normalization, quality of service and bandwidth management. That is all a cube can do. So it can do a lot of other tasks that we can perform on the cube itself. So to um, separate or segregate the traffic for the cube to perform its task individually. Typical deployment scenarios we can see here. We have a cube deployed here. We have a CUCM. We have an ITSP that I just told you that uh, this is what we use now. We do not use a PSTN connection like the even connection that was used earlier. Nowadays, it, uh, it is not very commonly used. ITSP is the one that we use. I, as an IP connection. So like we have ISPs for data networks. We have ITSP ded dedicatedly for telephony networks. So internet telephony service provider. Now let's suppose we have an ITSP connection to which we have a SIP trunk from our site. And then we have another company, company X connected to our site or maybe our employer through SIP or SP23. Trunk. So we can put a cube device here and uh, can do session control, internet working, demarcation, and security. So that can work as your firewall. It can do a lot of communication or intercommunication between these. It can perform session control, internet working, or interworking between these different sites with different protocols or different trunks configured, demarcation, and security. So IP PSTN connectivity with SIP trunk here we will see. Then next we will see business to business telepresence. So for business to business telepresence where video negotiation or video is used for the communication, for example. So video negotiation must be allowed, let's say. So that can be allowed using cube device, allowed or blocked using cube device. So we can see there are some telepresence devices on the two sides. And there is an ITS, ITSP communication between these two sites and cube devices being used from both the ends. And there is a video negotiation going on, which must be allowed. That can be done through cube. Some of the features of cube are protocol internet working, media flow, codec negotiation, line site phone proxy. So what is protocol internet working? It translates the call set of messages between different signaling protocols. Media flow is demarcation point between the two networks. Line side phone proxy connects the remote workers to CUCM using secure methods. And codec negotiation enforces specific codecs or order of codecs between the devices. 
protocol interworking direct calls using different protocols no cube element so if you have a uh, sip and st23 two sites using sip and st23 and there is no cube between these then there will be no communication so direct call using different protocols does not support so cube is one of the solution to that interworking between the same signaling protocols so if both are ht23 that can be done by default if both are sip that will work by default and all if you are using a cube device uh, then interworking between different protocols will work whether it's ht23 to st23 or sip to sip or sip to st23 signaling methods so with a uh, cube how provides the signaling different types of signaling methods it provides we discussed about the sip signaling methods in the day one in the signaling protocol there is a uh, different methods used by sip and ht23 so this is just an overview of that the same thing which is supported by cube as well sip delayed offer early offer early media right delayed offer you know in which uh, the invite message which is sent by the sip communication the the message is exchanged the invite message does not have the session description or sdp so invite without sdp is delayed offer and invite with sdp with the codec information and call information in the invite itself is the early offer early media is be with before exchanging all of these capabilities and before connecting the call the media is exchanged for example like a call a tone or any announcement or uh, any information like emergency or anything that is early media music on hold anything played before the call or call capabilities being exchanged so three different signaling methods are there delayed offer early offer early media same are uh, supported by cube for sip same way for ht23 we have slow start fast start early media and that is supported by cube as well so in the delayed offer we can see here in the delayed offer uh, no sdp is exchanged in the invite then it is sending other messages sip messages like trying ringing 200 okay with sdp which is being exchanged once it is received by the called or uh, the called number or the called device then it acknowledges with sdp it opens the port uh, for audio and video to make communication and rdp RTP communication happens between the two devices. In early offer, uh, in early offer, uh, in the invite, this is wrong here. In the invite, there is SDP, and then it will go ahead and make the call. The call will be answered, and a port will be opened for the RTP. early media is in which there is early media played so in which there is a 183 session progress additionally one message like this and once that is done early media audio will be played and a port will be opened for the media first and then for the communication for the call once the media is being played and it's answered then it will go ahead and on the rtp now protocol interworking with different signaling methods so protocol interworking with different signaling like sip to sip st232 st23 using different methods delayed offer early offer slow start fast start for sip and st23 so if it's sip then there will be delayed offer early offer in st23 it's slow start or fast start process both are supported for interworking between different signaling methods between different signaling methods uh interworking between these protocols for st 23 two steps slow start fast start delayed offer early offer is supported okay but slow start to early offer fast start to delayed offer is not supported so this is something to note so if it's slow start on one end on st 23 and delayed offer on step it will work but if it's a slow start early offer that will not work and if it's a fast start delayed offer that will not work 
if it's a fast start early offer that will work okay so this combination you need to know that hd23 sip interworking is possible it is supported but the signaling method needs to be in this order in this form so in hd23 if slow start is being used the sip should be delayed offer if hd23 is using fast start it should be early offer instead but vice versa it doesn't work if hd23 is using slow start and sip is early offer that will not work if hd23 is using fast start signaling method and sip is using delayed offer that will not work okay so slow start with delayed offer and fast start with early offer slow start with early offer does not work fast start with delayed offer does not then media flow so for media flow we can see that the uh, different signaling can be possible we discussed both hd 3 and sip and to flow the media like uh, in case of early media communication it supports both the protocols hd 3 and sip in early media there is uh, any delayed or early offer will be so here we can see we have two phones here and we have a cube element making communication. So this device will make a communication with the cube device. Now cube device will make a communication to the other device, the cold number and vice versa. So this is like the messenger sharing the information between the two clusters or two sites. Media flow around or media flow through it supports only using the same protocol ip phones has to reach each other in the network so i first first thing we need is called routing first for the cube to work or to be able to share the information between the two uh, sites it, the phones must be reachable in the network so call routing call pattern or everything is the prerequisite so that should be configured once there is intercommunication and the routing is configured correctly uh, on the call managers, then it can go ahead and allow the cube to make communication between the protocols or different signaling protocols. Codec negotiation can be done by the cube as well. So if you have a VoIP 1 and VoIP 2 to site, and there are different codecs being used, let's say VoIP 1 supports E711 A log. G729A, uh, G729B, whereas the other one also supports the same codex. Now, to make a communication between these codecs and negotiate the codex for different types of calls, this is the first communicate uh, prerequisite, I would say. So, if let's say any user on this VoIP site, let's say 1001, wants to communicate to any user 2001 here, Maybe it is using a codec G711 to make calls to inter site, or that should be the relation which is set. But the other side does not support G711 for that communication, it supports G729. So, based on that, it will um, identify the queue, will identify and negotiate the codec. The prerequisite that I was telling about is both the sites should be supporting the same codec. So, whatever codecs are matched on both the sites only that will be negotiated by a cube. So it can only identify the codec which is supported by both. So if they have a common codec which is supported, it always use the one with the lowest bandwidth in uh, codec negotiation. If both supports the same codec, then it will go ahead and make communication using the same. If not, it will use the one with the lower bandwidth, which is always G729 compared to G711. So they have just given one example here of G729 in codec negotiation. If that is happening, let's say this supports G711 and G729 and it supports G729 only and maybe some other ILBC or something and not G711. And in that case, it will negotiate and find G729 is the common one and it will allow that. Okay, now, uh, cube with codec transparency if nice like in this case now taking the same example 1001 and 
2001. If both are supporting G711, G729, G G So by default, what happens is uh, if both supports the different types of codecs and two codecs are being supported by both of these, it will usually use the one with the lower bandwidth. But what if we want to use this only? We want a better bandwidth. We do, we do not want to care about the bandwidth, but we want quality. We want this codec to be used. There can be transparency, so we can configure that. So not uh, not be using the default behavior. We can set the communication type between the two sites. So that is called transparency for no codec selection. So as both are supporting G711A law, it will use this one. Although it is taking more bandwidth, that can be set in the cube device. Line side phone proxy, we can configure line side phone proxies so like I uh, mentioned that one of the features of cube is address hiding. So that can be done on CUCM. So it can hide the information of the calling party or the call party that can be done. And that is uh, that, that's where it works as a proxy. So it can perform line side phone proxy. For that, SIP, RTP, TLS, uh, uh, SRTP, these are some protocols which are used for these communication. So within the enterprise, the commu uh, communication is happening via SIP and RTP between the devices, between the end devices and TLS between the enterprise and the public network for secure communication using TLS and SRTP for the communication between the devices. Next is cube call routing requirements. So for call routing on the cubes, these are some requirements like some mandatory, some recommended and some optional requirements. Mandatory are you have to configure inbound and outbound dial pair, of course. So from one VoIP network to another VoIP network, we have to make an inbound dial pair. We have to make an outbound dial pair. Same from the other side, we need to make an inbound dial pair. We make, need to make outbound dial pair at least for a communication. And only it will This is mandatory. So, for any number of destinations or patterns for each, we need to have one inbound and one outbound dial pair to make the communication work. If you just make an inbound dial pair for a destination uh, and not an outbound for it, it won't work. It needs to have code. Configure codec and codec preference list. So, in the preference list, it will know that how it has to perform the codec negotiation or it will have to do a transparency of codec negotiation and so on. We can do that in the codec preference list. We can configure DTMF relay. These, these are mandatory in the queue. Integration for call routing. Some recommended requirements are bind signaling and media to appropriate interfaces, disable VAD. These are some recommendations for cube to work uh, smoothly. Some optional requirements are force early offer because that is more uh, uh, reliable. So early offer should be used so that when the calling party is sending the information, it should send its call capabilities at the first place and not wait for the called party to uh, receive the invite and then send its information. So as an optional requirement, early offer should be used. Implement an IP access control list for additional security. This is also optional, but uh, should be used for better security. So these are some recommended optional and mandatory requirements for call routing in cube. These, this is an example of inbound and outbound dial pair. So on the cube, we have, let's say, we have uh, on one side, we have the user with the DN2001, on the other side, 4002. This is our uh, one of the cluster. Other might have some other IP address on this cluster. We need different dial pairs, inbound and outbound dial pairs to make calls from this side to this and this side to this side. So the dial pairs will be in this format. What is checked by cube to determine inbound and outbound dial pair is the order. So we have to make sure that the order of these dial pairs is correct. Which protocol is used on each dial pair? We have to make sure which protocol is being used, SIP, SCP, 
what must be interwork when a call is made from 2001 to 4002 like codex dtmf relay all those information so these are some examples uh, one of the example for this dial peer one voip so this must be an ip connection so dial peer voice one voip same here for the outbound dial peer dial peer voice two voip second dial peer answer address this session protocol we have to mention session protocol target this codex selection dtmf we have to enable this is the command to enable dtmf rte lte ip qos dhcp uh, cst signaling this is used if you have quality of service implemented you can enable quality of service dstp cs3 these are used for quality of service marking and these are the protocols we want to allow for the signaling and no vat this is one of the recommended configuration disable vat okay same way for the other dial peer, we have a destination pattern. This this is inbound and this is outbound. So for inbound, we configure the dial peers in this order and outbound. Just some slight difference will be there, like destination pattern. In uh, inbound, we specify the answer address number, and in outbound, we configure the destination pattern. The destination number. session target. The IP address of the session target would be this uh, CUCM codec supported uh, DTMF quality of service NOVAD. These are in here. And based on that, it will communicate and cube will make the call routing. Codec preference list we can configure codec preference list on the cube, like codec uh, voice class codec one. Codec preference one, first preference is G711. Codec preference two, G711 ULO, first is ALO, then ILBC, G729, and so on. So this is how in the voice class codec we can set preferences. Once we have set this preferences, we can apply it to the dial peer by going ahead and applying this class where we have configured all these preferences. Just apply this class and all these rules will be applied to this dial peer. So whenever a call is made to this destination, uh, in this example, we are taking an outbound dial pair. So when a call is going for this destination, it will uh, make the call uh, and codec preference based on the codec we have selected here in this class. So based on these preferences. So this would be the first preference, this is the second, third, and fourth. Right? So that can be associated with the dial pairs. DTMF relay method. So DTMF relay methods also we can apply within the uh, dial peer configuration. So different types of DTMF relay methods can be used. Set KPML, uh, whatever we want to apply here. For example, if we are using HT23, we can use H245, which is the protocol in this framework for alphanumeric. This is for signaling. NTE, Cisco proprietary RTP. In SIP, we have unsolicited notify. KPML is a key press markup language, SIP info, and so on. So any DTMF method we want to use here based on what protocol is being used uh, associated to that, we can apply it in the dial here, and that method will only be used for that particular dial. Then we can see Cube also supports URI dialing, so just make sure you and devices also support URI uh, dialing and the communication. So URI dialing can be done and inbound dial peer, outbound dial peer can be configured using URI format. So URI source is, for example, this, and for the other destination is this. So this is the source, this is the destination. We can make calls between these. And because we are doing call routing between different sites, these domains must be different. If it's the same, again, as we discussed, that is one of the problem that happens uh, in intercluster communication so needs to be different here. So call from one user in one domain to other user in the other domain using the URI can be done using cube. Here we can see the cube URI dialing configuration example. So we have a dial peer here. We have one dial peer voice one wipe. We have dial peer voice two wipe. We have a voice class URI local SIP. 
post is this. We have another voice class URI ITSP SIP post Cisco.com. So we have two voice class URI configured one for local, one for ITSP. Uh, one host is example.com, the other host name is Cisco.com. Next, in the dial tier, we can define it the incoming URI from local. This is the name, so we can set it here. And ITSP or ITSP. This is the name for the other class that we can apply to the other dial tier. So this are some integration. Combining outbound dial peers, we can combine dial peers with different preferences. Like for example, if we want to make calls outside, so different outbound dial peers will be configured. Now let's say there are different destinations for the same dial peer and we want to set preferences for these dial peers. So let's say if a call is coming to this destination, it should go to a preference number one, which can be any device in that network that is set. We can have another voice dial peer, which would be preference two and preference C and so on. So different preferences for outbound dial peers can be set. So based on that preference, it will go to those dial peers. So like in the routing table now, this will be the first preference for this particular destination. For the same destination, we have a second preference for this. If first one is not available, then it will go to the second one. If second one is also not available, it will go to the third one because the destination is the same. Right. So we can set preferences. We can set different dial peers in case if one is down, for example, if this SIP is down and we want uh, it to route to another one, so dot, dot five, it should go to dot six, the other side. That can be done using you. Server groups. So we can configure different server groups, like server group one, in which we can configure hunt team preference for different uh, nodes, we can combine this with the dial peer. So in this server group, we have different preferences of server, server one, two, three, right, that we have combined within the dial group, dial peer. So to make calls to this destination now, it will use this preference or order of preference of the server group. Voice class E.164 pattern. We can configure E.164 pattern uh, voice class also. So like in E.164, we want to set a pattern like this, 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 and make, to make calls to these destination, these patterns should be used. We can apply that pattern to the dial. Right? So whenever the calls will be made for these destinations, these patterns should always be used like the prefixes or uh, in the mask or numbers like that can be used and we can apply it on the dial peer so that a call going for any destination or for incoming dial peers we can apply these patterns same way we have another example of the class e.164 pattern so here we can use in the form of this like URL flash, we can take it from here. Let's say we have a configuration file with these patterns configured. We want to apply that to the dial pattern. We can, or dial peer, we can do that. We can store it from the flash. We can also use TFTP for that purpose. Destination dial peer groups, we can see some examples. We have destination dial peer groups. We have a voice class here. We have different preferences of dial peers. And then the dial peers we have configured for inbound or call numbers. We have uh, outbound using destination. So the differences in inbound, you'll always see incoming called number like this. For outbound, it will be destination pattern this and so on. So here also we can set preferences. Once these are configured, we can set preference in the dial peers. We can also configure restriction or group restriction dial peers uh, for destination. Dial peer group is in shutdown state, for example. So regular dial peer search occurs. So it will check. It's like I keep alive. It keeps a check on the dial peers. All dial peers in dial group are unavailable, unavailable. So the call will be disconnected. The number of match digits is zero. In that case, it will be restricted. 
the destination pattern command is required on the outbound dial peer. If the matching is not done based on this command, the call will be disconnected. The outgoing call setup waits for interdigit timer expiration or pressed terminator button. So these are some uh, possibilities 